another EWC horolo horological happy hour. I haven't even started drinking yet, and I'm already you slurring, even my, slurring my words. Uh, <laughs> we're uh, we're working on getting Instagram up and running as well. But uh, thank you guys for joining us. Um, we'll just kind of uh, I don't know. We'll we'll we'll, we'll shoot the we breeze until we yeah can we can pour, pour exactly. We what are we drinking? So, uh, this week we've got some Blantons, which was Fabulous. I believe a gift from a client. So very very nice mm -hmm. gift. Hopefully. Everybody at home is uh, joining in with a little something nice as well. Thank, Thank you, you Robert. Good, Appreciate that. So this week, um, we'll we'll introduce it again once Instagram is up and running. But we're going to talk about uh, watches with nicknames and celebrity connect. Oh, as I'm dripping, damn it! And uh, and celebrity connections. We we're kind of thinking about, you know, all the different pieces out there that have kind of like ridiculous nicknames and. It turns out to be a lot of Rolex. <laughs> and not only the nickname thing, but I think the fact that so many watches now end up uh, associated with somebody. Yeah. You know, there like there are so many different levels of watch celebrities. <laughs> I'm not letting that go to waste, please. <laughs> can we can we get a paper towel? Can we, can we get some service here? Um, there's so many celebrities and whether they're Instagram celebrities, whether they're watch world celebrities, mm -hmm. whether they're real world, historical so figures, people, yeah. right. Who have influenced the watch market and the watch collecting world that I thought live was kind of live like, on Instagram as well. Excellent. Nice. Hello, Instagram. Instagram. What's up? We've been waiting for you. Um, why don't we just rehash things? Okay. So what we're doing this week. We're doing watches with nicknames, watches with celebrity connections. Yeah. Robert was eloquently talking about, you know, how, um, you know, big name and well-known collectors have kind of influenced um, the collect the watch collecting public's, yeah. you know, preferences and what they're interested yeah. in and what the market is into at a given moment. And one of the things we're interested in finding out from all of you who are watching with us, uh, please put in the chat: Do you care? Does it matter to you if you see celebrities wearing these watches? Do these kind of brand ambassadors, does that work? We've seen it on a really high level. Sorry, Craig, we're being told we have no sound on Instagram. Um, sorry, keep talking. I'm going to try if you're and work on through this. Sorry, oh, I guess yeah. they can't hear Damn us. It. Type in the chat. If you can't hear us, join us on, uh, join us on YouTube, though. Okay. All right. All right. Anyways, we're going to just jump into it. Um, I'm going to put a note in here. Rob, you keep talking. I'm going right. to put a note in here. So if you're, if you're watching and you're in the chats, hopefully we'll get that YouTube chat up soon as well. Uh, does, it, does it move the needle for you? Would it inspire you to uh, buy a watch? Would it inspire you to get interested in a watch if you see it on somebody's wrist? Um, I've been noticing, and what kind of spurred this conversation, is a lot of the coverage in the watch media has been like the Oscars, who's wearing what? The Grammys, who's wearing yep. what? Um, you know, there's a lot of that kind of content in my feed these days. And I've noticed a big push from Omega, mm -hmm. and I've noticed a big push from Jaeger in getting these watches on people's wrists. And there's there are some posts where it's like four or five people in a row well, wearing seem, that brand. It seems to be, there's almost like one brand that tends to be the one that is kind of dominating said event. So, you yeah. know, Oscars this year, Cartier, or maybe it wasn't the Oscars, but it was some, some recent event, Cartier was everywhere. Everybody's wrist yeah. you looked at, there was a Cartier. I remember what you were talking about with JLCs. Yeah. It's the, I don't know if it was the Grammys or what, but everybody had a JLC on. Yeah, Lenny um, Kravitz, and like every time you see him now, like he, I actually saw, there's a great clip of his daughter, Zoe, Zoe yeah. roasting his mesh shirts oh, while he's that, yeah. getting, it's really good, yeah. <laughs> while he's getting his Hollywood uh, star on the Walk of Fame. Yeah. And he's wearing that gold reverso. I think it's the gold reverso chronograph. Yeah. Um, because he's clearly got a relationship there. I mean, what, um, it, what it is, and we were, we were talking about it, is that a lot of brands have realized that traditional marketing or traditional marketing spend, is they're not getting a lot of bang for their buck by right. by going through traditional channels when it comes to marketing. Yeah. So I it's mean, kind of... it's media. It, but it's, it's like the new influencer world that we live in where... Yes. Brands have found that by partnering with big name celebrities or influencers or whoever it might be, you know, no matter what field you're in, they can get way more bang for their buck 
um, than if they bought, you know, an, an ad in X magazine or whatever it might be. Right, because they're going to get so much more like people sending that post around Instagram coverage from the watch blogs and all of that. Right. Of people wearing these things. And I think that goes a lot farther. So. Right. Do you care? Does it matter if a current person is wearing the watch? Does it matter if a historical pers uh, figure is wearing the watch? Because we have both on this table here. Yeah. We have fictional characters <laughs> who have influenced the watch world. Yeah, it's true, yeah, right? I, know, I, I mean, know. there are certain watches that exist. Uh, oh, you know what else I forgot was the the JLC Ultra Thin Perpetual. I don't think we have one. Why? Doctor Strange. Oh, okay. That was huge. That's that actually a good out. one. Yeah. And everybody was looking at that. So even James Bond, Doctor Strange, Tony Stark. Wasn't yep. he wearing like an Urwerk in one of those? In one of those he so was, yeah. you get not only real people, you know, we've got U.S. presidents on the table, we've got explorers. Musicians, explorers, you know, astronauts. Astronauts. Yeah. astronauts uh, why, don't we, why don't we start? Why don't, why don't right. we run through a few? Why don't we start there? So we're going to start by talking about some of the pieces that are closely associated with, with a person, whether it was, whether, whether they were real or fictional. Mm. Um, and sometimes whether or not they even wore the watch. Yeah. Because there are even some of those associations where, you know, the watch, like I think of one we don't have, the Rolex Steve McQueen, mm -hmm. where it's an explorer too, and they call it the Steve McQueen, but he never actually wore well, it. Well, he wore it very briefly for an ad, and uh, there's a whole kind of story along with yeah. that. But yeah, okay. So why don't we, where do you want to start? What do you think? Let's start with some of the historical stuff. That's um, what I said, because yes. Because I think one of the first things for me that comes to mind mm -hmm. is this guy. 100%. Um, because this existed before social media and before... <laughs> you know, any of this kind of pop culture thing was going on, you had the Rolex Day-Date, which was like the top of the line, right? right? That's like their their pinnacle piece. And at the time, uh, what was what was that? Back in the 70s? What? I guess, Johnson? Because I think well, of so Johnson L L first. LBJ wore, he, yes, he did wear it in the 60s, late 60s, but it was actually Eisenhower in the in the 50s. He was known oh, to wear, wow. a, wear a day date as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, a little closer, maybe? there we go, get it a little bit. So, no, but you have, you have multiple U.S. presidents yeah. who, you know, are associated with this watch. You have Eisenhower, like you oh, said, glass. you got LBJ. Um, I believe Kennedy was photographed wearing one as well. So, you know, the Rolex day date, you know, went on to become known as the Rolex, the Rolex president. president. And we call this the president bracelet now. Exactly. Johnson is who I think of too. I yeah, think of Lyndon Johnson. Um, and he also had, he had a great paddock too. He had that paddock 25, 26 well, with the, the golden, golden rule, rule yeah. on it. Yeah. But like in terms of like watches with nicknames, was there one before this? Was there something I'm sure, before I'm sure there you was. had the Rolex sure there was. president? Because I don't even know if that started with Rolex. I think that started with the pop culture and the fact that it was worn by a few sitting U.S. presidents. Oh, no, I was going to say 100%. This, this was not ever officially known as the president by Rolex. Over time, obviously, that changed. But no. It, Do it they was... call it the president now on their website? Is that the Volcan? That's an interesting That's an one, interesting too, one right? Well. The Watch of Presidents, the Volcan Cricket. Um, not a brand we work with, but that is also a good shout. Um, so the president was kind of the first thing that came to mind. And to me, I think that's a historical connection that I really like. I think that that's very cool. It's, it's kind of a shame that, you know, a president wouldn't really do that anymore. You know, you had, uh, well, you don't see a luxury watch on the president now because you had, was it, uh, Clinton with the Timex yeah, Iron Timex. Man and you had Obama wore a, um, a Shinola. Post presidency, and though. Biden wears. Biden, Biden wears. He's a day just. He wears a day just. He wears a Seamaster. He has a Seamaster as well. So. Um, and then Robert, you're wrong, but that's fine. Uh, I am. <laughs> that's, well, here we go. Continuing, that's rare. Continuing on the on the theme of of president watches. Of presidents. This one, I mean, this this you get a little bit of everything. You get a little bit of NASA juice. You get a little bit of of Richard Nick Tricky Nick Tricky Dick Nixon. Uh, Although I think he he didn't actually get to keep the he did watch, not. right? The he so the had value to... of this piece was too high, uh, and it exceeded the amount that a president could accept as a gift. So it actually that the piece that he was gifted is in the Smithsonian now. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, this was sixty nine, seventy something like that. Because uh, this was right I don't there. Know. I think it was early seventies. Yeah, with the moon landing. Um, and this was. 
a Speedmaster in a solid yellow gold case, yellow gold dial, and then this lovely burgundy bezel and these black hour markers. I think this is one of the nicest looking Speedmasters. Yeah, agreed. And the fact that they brought it back mm -hmm. and did such a fitting tribute to it is killer. What um I know this was a limited edition. I can't remember. Actually, I think they may have done it in the in an edition of the year that it was origi it originally came out. Ah, I'll look on the back. They did or a, something a like that. fantastic job with this bracelet. It gets real skinny here, yeah. which I really really like. Um, and it almost like. It almost has that like president bracelet yep. look to it instead of your kind of more standard Omega bracelets. I mean this this and the new the new flat link style bracelet that Omega does on this. Oh, this is weird. No, What's it's up? not the year. No, because they did one thousand and fourteen of them. So unless this was there for like 10, the signing 14, of huh? the Magna Carta, <laughs> <laughs> that was ten sixty six. Rob, get your history right. Come on. This uh, was not. This was not. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Year. But. but cool watch. Fiftieth anniversary Apollo eleven. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So nineteen sixty nine. Yeah, I thought that's what it was. And they were, they they tried to give one to Nixon, and then they gave one. You get a nice display back with this. So all the astronauts, they, they, they were yeah, awarded one. This new camera setup works so much better. Nice. You guys can see that. Really, really nice watch. Yeah. So that's a great variant. Dick Nixon, even though he never, <laughs> even though he never wore one. It's awesome. I, I mean, love yeah, it. Whatever. It was, it was given to him. It's the coolest thing. Yeah. Almost as good as the like the 2020 Olympic uh, watches, like the watches for the Olympics oh, that for didn't the, happen. The Tokyo Olympics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, well, I find stuff like happened, that just really a year cool. later. Yeah, but it wasn't. That's gonna be. I mean, if only Omega hadn't made tens of thousands of them. If there, if it was actually limited and it had the wrong year, that'd be super cool. But yeah, that's um, what I mean. Is stuff like that to me is always kind of appealing. Oh, I agree. Like Do those, we, those little nothing on YouTube yet. Any comments in the in in the IG chat? About... Not, not yet. Not yet. People saying they don't care about uh, about celebrity connections, but you know. Well, that's what uh, I was curious about. Like, does it matter? Well, it doesn't. Like, does it Who cares? work? It's cool. I so all right. Here, what, before we continue, why don't you and I talk about that a little Cut. bit? Because like. I think we're on the same page that like neither yeah you want to switch camera here um, that ne neither of us really care about um, any kind of celebrity connection um, like honestly unless like Jacques Cousteau actually wore this this Blancpain Aqualung from from the fifties sixties like that would be cool like I would totally be into that but his actual watch. like his like one that was he actually actual wore watch. and I think it's it's cool that it has that association um, and I. You know, we've talked about it before. Like, I'm a total sucker for stories and, you know, like you just said, like weird wrinkles in history yeah. and thing like things like that. But I don't care that, you know, James Bond wore, you know, an Omega Seamaster in whatever, you know, Pierce Brosnan movie. Like, that would never convince me to buy an Omega Seamaster. It, this kind of story might, I don't know, it has, it has a little bit of a draw for me. But in general, a living person, like seeing John Mayer wearing a John Mayer Daytona, mm -hmm. that doesn't change my mind on the Daytona. Like, because he thinks it's cool, I don't think it's cool. Like, I like that watch anyways. I think it's a beautiful piece. But, like, seeing him wearing it, I'm not like, oh, you're right. That's an amazing watch. And I think that is the view of most of the people who are sitting here watching us right, right now. Because as, like, seasoned watch people mm. within this hobby, yep. you probably have an idea of what you like and True. what your taste yes. is and you know what what's good for you and what's not. Sure. I think where that actually pays more dividends, especially for the brands, is for the guy who's not a watch person exactly. yet. Exactly. And the guy who goes to see James Bond and sees him blowing stuff up and like <laughs> and living the life, <laughs> yeah. wearing an Omega Seamaster and they're like, man, I want that. Right. And so then and then they you know, then that starts them down the rabbit hole, right? Or like whether it's a Rolex sub in the old ones or whatever. You know, it could even be like one of those crazy paddocks that Jay-Z wears or something like that. Or, you know, Michael Jordan and the Irwerks or right. something where it's suddenly like you were a sports guy and they're talking about Michael Jordan wearing this crazy watch you've never seen that looks like or nothing you've ever jo seen before. Jo Jordan with the data grab on the Wellendorf bracelet. Like, oh, yeah, he's got that too. So um, cool. But that might then make somebody new go, oh man, I and even a watch guy, right? Maybe you're a watch guy who follows like one of those celebrity watch spotter accounts uh -huh. or something, and you've never heard of Erwerk, and uh -huh. you mostly live in this world, and then it's like, you know, Michael Jordan wearing this Erwerk, and you're like, what is that? And it brings you to look at that brand. Sure. Whether it motivates you to buy it or not is harder, but I think if it brings people to your site or to your 
to something they might not have looked at before, I think there's a lot of value in yeah, that. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think it it has more of an impact on lower priced pieces than it does on something like 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 Jordan wearing the dado or John Mayer wearing, you know, I, playing, I, playing, I... playing playing a uh, an entire tour wearing a concept it doesn't like i don't think there's that trickle down it's it's much ho- like again like seeing michael jordan wearing a datagraph on a, on a wellendorf bracelet you know mm-hmm. i don't whatever i was a kid i don't remember you know pegging that at the time or whatever but like or clocking <laughs> that but even if i say i was you know i was me 25 years ago yeah. and i and i was watching a game you know where he was sitting on the on the bench or whatever wearing that I don't think I'm saying I'm seeing that and saying like, oh, I need to go buy that now. Like, it, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I, it's 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 a little bit of a disconnect. It's not the same as I like see, seeing somebody mean. wearing a pair mean. of sneakers and you're you know a celebrity wearing a pair of sneakers right. or something. You're like, oh, those are cool. I'm gonna go buy those now. Right. Like, it's it's different. Yeah, I get that. Um, I don't think I made sense, but that's fine. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say anything because I don't want to hurt you. Go, go, Goldenberg Durham asked, which watch brand has most has the most nicknames for its watches and. Rolex. By looking at our table, like it's Rolex, uh, so almost go to the every top down. almost every single one of their pieces has a nickname. So yeah, why don't we? Uh, but they're collector name nicknames. That's true. They're not they're not official nicknames, but that's what a nickname is. It's not necessarily an official. So on this table alone. Also, I'm, I want to say right now, yeah. um, everybody watching on Instagram, that one that camera might not be changing. If you want to get the other angles, get the top down and get the the wrist cam that I have over here, come join us on YouTube. This is this is on a delay too, so um, um, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So anyway, so back to Rolex. So literally on this table, so we have a Smurf, we have a Sprite, we have a Coke, we have a Pepsi, we have uh, what else we got? Rob, help me out here. We got a Playtona. We have a Batman. We don't have a Batgirl, but there's a Batgirl. Yeah. We have a Clint Eastwood. Yep. We have. Did we get a Cameron? No, we don't have a Cameron right now, which Seriously? is crazy. I know. That's I wild. I looked. There um, is a Cameron. I mean, and we actually, have the, the, that like the this Cookie watch. Monster. Like yes. So this whole side is Rollies. Yeah. And even some on this side. Oh, and this is like a Rolly by association. We'll get to that. Yes. Right. Yeah. A Tudor Tiger. Rawr. <laughs> um, and another Rolly there. So I. You know, this is kind of interesting because I agree with you that to me, this kind of association carries more weight than uh, than this one here. We right. talk about like two dive watches, one used by a real person who actually did explore the depths, another used by a fictional character who explored a different kind of depth. Uh, <laughs> or, 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 yeah, or lack thereof. That's I'm okay. talking about, like, I know, I know. You know, the depths <laughs> of evil. Oh, That's okay. What I meant. All right. All right. Yeah. We're talking yeah, yeah, yeah. about uh, <laughs> layers in volcanoes. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so this is a vintage Blancpain 50 Fathoms. This is the real deal. This is like a late 50s watch. This has radium loom on the dial and the hands. Um, this is known as the Aqualung or the Jacques Cousteau because he actually wore one of these while doing the amazing things that he did under the sea. Um, and this, it's one of those watches where it doesn't have a huge connection. You know, it's definitely not as recognizable as a James Bond sub or Seamaster or something like that, or even some of the Speedmasters like the, the Ed White and the, sure. uh, what's the other one? Wally, oh, Wally Shiro. Oh, right. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, you know, it doesn't have that kind of street cred, but I think within the watch community, people know that this is something special and that this is like a watch you're not going to see on everybody's wrist because these didn't have commercial success. These went to divers and military and yeah, this is history. Yeah. And this I th- is like I think, the Rolex president. I think to me with, within a certain subset of collectors, like there almost is nothing better than this, you know, I mean dive watch collectors, vintage dive watch collectors, um, you know, there's overlap with people, you know, again, Cousteau, uh, the, the Cousteau co- connection. Like, it's, I don't know, I, this, this is, of all the pieces on the table, that's probably the one that, like, has the most draw for me. Um, and I don't know if it's just a, I'm sure it's probably just a personal affinity for, you there know. There we go. Oh, yeah, that looks nice. I mean, look at that thing. Oh. It's amazing to find these in this condition. This bezel is Bakelite, which is basically like glass. Yeah. Um, and it is that level of fragile. They're plastic crystals, obviously, because it was the 1950s. 
Um, and you have radium, which also, you know, caused uh, degradation on the dial, which you can see here. There's definitely some patina on the dial. It's got um, wild patina in person on that dial. But it yeah. looks, it looks, it looks so good. And this one, the bezel even, like there's a crack down here, but that's kind of it. Yeah, so it's pretty clean. To find one like this is really rare. So many of these were probably flooded and destroyed or decommissioned. And it's an awesome watch. Yeah. Oh. Uh, What's that? Like a 12, maybe? I don't know. No, I think it's, it's just really the radium. Not, yeah, it's not bad. It's like it's this really one is nice. this one is incredible. And so many of these have like bogus parts on them because the bezels failed and they changed them or whatever. Like <laughs> this is real. This yeah. is awesome. Yeah. You should look at that. Um, where do we go next? You pick. I mean, I think let's go opposite end of the spectrum. Let's go to Longa. Okay. So we'll just go with a, a straight nickname right now that's non Rolex. Um, so this is the Ooh, a brand that I don't think does any kind of celebrity kind they of stuff, do right? Nothing. So we got a Longa Zeitwerk. This is the Lumen though, and it's known as the Phantom. So this is the original Lumen, which you can hopefully see there in the in the camera. So this, you know, like all Lumens, has that that smoked sapphire there dial. Go. There you now go. Look at it. that. Yes, yeah, so you can see all of the you know the the wheels and the uh, you know the, the the rest of the hours and minutes. Um, you know, there in the background. So, again, this is the first, um, the first model in the Lumen. Con uh, the the are you, oh, nice. Does that work? Eh, a little bit. Not little really. bit. You a can see bit. a little bit of the glow. So the original. The reason Lumen, it's though. a Lumen is that all of the. Nah, it's okay. Don't worry about it. We would need the black light for it. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. All of the numbers on the time discs there are luminous. And when you hit this like with a black light or something like that, and you get it in a dark room, it really does look cool because you see everything below the dial, which is pretty neat. Yeah, pretty obvious nickname for that one. Yeah. I feel like I mean it's makes you know, a lot of sense. Uber limited, you know, a hundred total pieces in platinum. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Whoa. That movement is absurd. Such such a wild piece. Yeah. There's not much to say about this. I mean, it's it's incredible. It has it's one of the few Longas with a nickname, because um, everything else like the Turbo Graph. I think Longa actually calls that the Turbo Graph. They do, um, and that's it. I can't think of anything else. Oh, the Stealth. They do the have stealth. some nicknames. I actually. guess a couple. Yeah. There's yeah. the Stealth. There's the Darth. Oh, look at this, producer Craig coming through. There you go. Don't even bother, David. We're good. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. So look see it perfectly. at that. Bam. Careful where you point that black light, Robert. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, suit's clean. I promise. <laughs> yeah. So pretty cool. Really, really special piece. Yeah. Super um, interesting and a very cool concept. Nobody else did this before. I no. appreciate that. And, right. I mean, honestly, really, who else? I guess there. Because well, it's no not one, a skeleton. No one, is, no one has done a, a smoked sapphire crystal. Every yeah. you know, there are plenty of sapphire crystals or sapphire dials out yeah. there. But the smoked part is is kind of go go that's back not smoked, to the though. Uh, that, that's really just a sapphire crystal. Yeah. Um, go back to the comments real quick. So I was gonna say, so August Graphic Design is asking why do why do we think the Rolex one one six seven one one six seven zero LN? I think he means probably one one six seven ten LN. Never got a nickname. Do you guys have a nickname for it? So that's the oh, that's the, the black all black one. GMT, we which so, we don't have on the table, but we I think we do have one in person. Yeah, so we here's a, here's a Batman, which you all are familiar with. Um, called Batman because of the blue and black. Um, and this was the second iteration of this watch. This one? Uh, like the ceramic GMT, because the all black was first. Yeah, the all black was first. And right. then they went to the black and blue here that we have yep. here. Um, and this, that all black was actually the first ceramic bezel watch from Rolex. Right. That was oh, the first nine, right? six digit. I always forget that. That was the first six-digit watch that Rolex made within the sports line where you started getting the ceramic. You started getting the bigger case, what they call the maxi case. You got the new bracelet with the new clasp, all of those wonderful features. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's interesting because, like, I was actually thinking, oh, maybe, you know, what was before that? But, no, you had the Kermit before that. You know, there were, there were plenty of other pieces that had, you know, collector nicknames. Yep. And I've never heard yeah, anyone. Yeah, because the Pepsi and the Coke were there, but right. then all of a sudden they were like, "Hey, let's do superheroes." But the I'm not sure. But why. I've never heard of anybody having a nickname for the All Black, which is interesting. Um, the Green Lantern, because it has a little lantern. bit. It has it has a little bit of green on it. <laughs> on, the GM, on the I'm GMT. I'm trying to hand. go with DC Comics. You're That's DC, of, right? I, you got I me, never buddy. read I Green Lantern. No idea. I apologize to all the Green Lantern <laughs> fans out there. Green Hornet. He was green too. 
Um, there's a little bit of green there. But Rolex, the GMT Rolex thing is wild. Because even back to the 6542, mm. there are some people who refer to that as the Pussy Galore because right. she wore one in Thunderbolt. Mm, that was Dr. No, wasn't it? No. Definitely <laughs> not. Uh, no, that was Goldfinger. Oh, it was Goldfinger. It was Goldfinger. Yeah, You're right. Yeah. It was Goldfinger. Uh, um, Thunderball was the top time. Yeah, he wore that was a top that was a bright with, exactly. with the Geiger counter. Yeah, which was so I cool. love Doctor No and so that much. Giant case. That's my first, my favorite. Um, but yeah, so this one with the all black bezel, no nickname. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, we should come up with one collectively. That's maybe not a superhero because we have <laughs> we have Batman. Nope. No, we got a Hulk. Where is it? There it is. There it is. We got the Hulk. Which makes sense, obviously. Another Rolex with a superhero name. What do you think? Is this better than the than the return of the Kermit? The green dial? Which is, hold on, I got that here go. somewhere, too. The green dial green without dial. the black? Top. Top. I mean, I... Which one's better? I, I definitely prefer the Hulk to the... To the Starbucks, whatever you want to call the, the new, the the new Sermit, Kermit, essentially. The Sermit, the Starbucks something... Ooh, Dephorograph. Yeah, that is a good nickname, actually. That is a good one. I should also point out that Mr. Paradigm has said, uh, John Mayer, anything means unobtainable unless <laughs> you're willing to pay way more money than it's worth. True. In this case, an entire collection that is better and more interesting in other pieces. Switch me back to the, to the main camera here. Um, this is a really interesting idea that, what? you know, you have these people within the watch collecting community who say, hey, this yellow gold green dial Daytona, this is really special. Yeah. And then just like that, it's double, right? I mean, and there's a few people, I feel like he has more kind of power than most. Agreed, people. I think in the, in the watch world, you know, whether you like it or not, I think he definitely has more clout than pretty much any anyone else when it comes to saying something is good or not. Well, you know what the funny thing is, too? I feel like a, a lot of John Mayer's pieces yeah. are, like, production pieces. Like, he has that steel 5004, yeah. right? Which I was is say, he's got, he's got some ridiculous patterns. He's got stuff. some yeah. crazy vintage stuff. But, like, you know, he wears an AP Turby. He right. wears AP Concept. But, he I mean, wears... I don't know if I'd call the concept really production pieces. Those are those are still very esoteric out there. It is, but it's something you could get versus yeah. somebody like Jay-Z who's or, wearing or Clapton. A, a piece unique, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, Rolex that Frank Mueller turned into a perpetual calendar <laughs> or that crazy... The Grandmaster Chime. Was it a twenty four ninety nine with the integrated bracelet or something? Like, I mean... Uh -huh. There's there's photos of him wearing stuff that's like we would say not mortal watches. No, of course like, not. Because like you're you're never gonna find it, and if you do, it's millions of dollars. Sure, at sure, yeah. Um, and like you think of uh, Pharrell and yeah. that Martian the RM, RM that yeah. they made for him that's yeah. super cool. And that the cool thing about that though is it might bring somebody to RM who'd never looked at them before and been like, oh wow, that's actually super cool. And you you probably can't get that because I think they made like. Four of them yeah, or but like in their, th this kind of goes back to what I was but. saying about. I don't really think that that has much of an influence at that level because what billionaire or what person that has the means to buy that RM is cares gives gives like any shit about whether or not. But it puts it on no, the radar. No, and it's like. Every single every single high net worth client and an individual that I know would never in a million years call me up and say, "Hey." I just saw Pharrell wearing that RM. I gotta have it, it's so cool. Like, they are all, like, they are, s that person who has gotten themselves to that position, mm -hmm. by nature of, like, the position that they have, they have, they have placed themselves, themselves in, they are never going to say that they were influenced by anybody to buy something. Like, they, they are the one. They say it. They are they the one making, it, making but... the, the, the decision. And, and like, I they are the tastemaker. Because, like, remember when the Tiffany Eleven came out. It was like a racist you could get picture of a person like Instagram. It felt like Jay Z and Mark Wahlberg. It was like yeah, whoever had it first. So I, I think at that level, it's more of like a who has it a one up, I, one but up I, yeah, yeah. And I think there's definitely a big part of that because they did that, and there were all these Tiffany things, and then uh, Jean Arnaud yeah. comes out and just goes, yeah, you're, yeah, all, you're all with fools. It, yeah, yeah. Here's a 5740 <laughs> with a Tiffany blue dial. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, 
there's always some element of that in any kind of collecting. I don't care if okay. you collect Pokemon cards <laughs> or if you collect... Sorry, my son's in a big Pokemon fan, so it's in my head. <laughs> I don't care if you collect Pokemon cards or if you collect watches or if you collect wine or bourbon or scotch or whatever. Um, there's always that element of, yo, look at my sparkly Charizard or whatever, right? Or, hey, look at my AP Concept Turbion. And yeah. you might own it because you appreciate the mechanical mastery that's going on here and you enjoy wearing it and it gives you that. But when you go to a collector meetup, you know, you're there to say, check this out. Look at this. Yeah, of course. You know? Of course. And so there's always that element of something. There's like, oh, you've got a paddock perpetual. Cool. Mine says, mine's Tiffany. You know? Right. But or like, that's mine's not what we're talking about. We're, we're, we're talking about whether or not th you are influencing other people to go and buy that piece. But I think I think that happens whether it's on a macro level as a celebrity like John Mayer wearing an AP concept turbion and playing a tour with it. I think yeah. it was a Dead & Company tour that he wore one for like the whole run. I know, I know he, I don't remember which one it was, but yes, you were right. Something it was definitely like a tour. And, and he wore this watch and he wore this crazy high horology thing and he's up on stage playing music with it every yeah. night. And yeah. he talked about like, was it his 5004? Yes. Where he got yeah. the loom on it yeah. so that he could read it on stage. While he was, yeah, yeah, He yeah. never <laughs> intended to wear it on stage, but he, he did that. And to me, that's like, that's one of those things where people, you know, a certain, and I, I you know, I think John Mayer's fantastic. I respect him as a musician on a very, very high level. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't make me go buy an AP Concept Turbion. No. Um, because uh, we can go to the close-up cam for this one since we're talking about it. Remove the Batman. And I agree. Somebody who's like, Hulk is the winner. Yeah. You're right. Um, oh, I don't know why I'm taking this off. It's showing on the wrong wrist today. But uh, Here is an AP of the highest caliber. I think these are very cool. These are movements by Reno and Poppy, which is the same movement manufacturer where a lot of the high end uh, well, they do all RM, RM and, pieces yeah, come out a lot of, of stuff. and amazing technical prowess on this piece. It's a very cool case because it is completely different from anything else that they make. It doesn't look like your standard Royal Throw, Oak. throw that on your wrist as well. Cause I mean, I, it, it when you look at the dimensions, it is ridiculous and it's massive, but it it actually wears better than you would expect on the wrist. It still sits, you know, I'm a doing mile, this on my wrong wrist, and I'm not as it sits a here. mile high. It is, you know, it it's, is it's it is still thick, big, but but it's not bad. It's contoured in such a way that it does work. Yeah, it's not like it's not unwearable. It doesn't look right with a suit. No, of course not. Especially not with this white strap, which yeah. actually is very cool. It is kind of neat. It's actually. super neat. Yeah. Um, but. It's a cool piece. It's and I actually, I really appreciate how they made this kind of futuristic take on the AP case without trashing it. Yeah. Like, it still feels like a Royal Oak, even though it doesn't look like any standard Royal Oak on the market. It, it has all of the DNA, you know, of the Royal Oak that it that it needs to retain, while, like you said, while still being yeah. completely out of left These field and wild. These are crazy undervalued, yeah. by the way. They like are, for actually. everybody watching. They are. Let me see if I can wind this and get that Turbion moving for you all. Yeah, so, um, again, for people watching, this is a flying Turbion GMT. And I believe this, you have to pull it out one to Yes, one. I was going to yep. say, first there position is, is winding on that one. And yeah. get that moving. Yeah, Turbion GMT. And there's, it, it's, again, it's kind of hard to see on, you know, on, on, on video, but that, the plate, you know, the base plate of that movement, it's like a, almost like a bluish gray color textured. There's so many different, you know, levels and planes kind of on that, um, I guess you'd call it the dial, uh, the non-existent <laughs> dial. But yeah, just very, very, very cool piece. There's a lot, there's a lot of handwork here. There's a lot of high-end engineering. Yeah on a very, very high level. And it's not heavy. No. I think well, it's titanium. titanium. It is titanium. Yeah. So it's it's titanium with a ceramic bezel. It's lightweight. It's cool materials. It's very legible. Look at that. You can read it. <laughs> um, but it is. It's like, this is very cool. And I think what's neat about this is if you're wearing this, this is one of those things where it doesn't scream AP since you don't have the bracelet. So, you know, somebody might look at it and be like, oh, cool watch, but they you know, the normal person on the street might not know what this is, which some, in some cases is nice. Yeah. Well, especially if you're, you know, you are in that RM buying category and you don't want 
yeah. everybody to know what you have on your wrist. Like, here you go. There's This yeah. is exactly, like you it. know, this I is like what you're it. looking And like. I think it's cool to know that it stands up to the rigors of uh, playing a concert. Yeah. If you right? needed to. You know, if you're in that Sweating business. Sweating all over it. And, and, you, yeah. uh, and you need to play a concert, you're good to go. Um, <laughs> why don't you pick something else? Why don't we go with this guy? So this is, this is, oh, this, this is cool. This is a nickname just for us, essentially. Uh, so this is a Paddock 5961A. So this is the the steel 5960 with a black dial that was produced for like just about a year. I think it was 2008 to 2009. Super, super short production run. Um, you know, and they also made it with the white dial. Uh, the black dial was for a very short period of time. The black you know, dial was one of, it was one of the first Paddock references that I remember that was like, hey, check out this new watch. And then all of a sudden, you know, it was a gone. year later, it didn't exist in right. the catalog anymore. And right. I was like, what are they doing? So, you know, some people might call this the, you know, the eight ball or something like that, but <laughs> we're gonna, we, uh. <laughs> I've never heard it. No? That. Oh yeah. Stuff yeah, up. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm like, not making stuff up. I like mean, a magic eight ball? Exactly. It's got windows on it? I guess, I don't know. Shake it up, Rob, see what it says. Check later. Uh, <laughs> so. It says you're wrong. Is that <laughs> <laughs> Probably right, actually. It says you're but, wrong. So this one, we, here, actually, why don't you go ahead and show off Show off the papers. Here, yeah, go out. Just, just give that, give that a little. Uh, there you go with your thumb there, just to, just to cover that. So no, David, it's all right. You can go to the other camera. Oh, I'm over here now. Come on. I'm over here. So this is the Ellen watch, actually. So th th this was actually owned by Ellen DeGeneres. She Beverly was, Hills. It, I mean, obviously a, a a pretty major watch collector. She's got a pretty nuts collection with a bunch of Newmans and stuff. Uh, and she was, I think she was on, you know, like, she wore this on her show and Yeah, everything. there's photos of her there's wearing this. She's got a, a super heavy watch collection. And she's not, she's not like, a, I bought this just because this is what, you know, rich, famous people no. buy. Like, she was buying Newman's and she was buying cool stuff like that. Well, I mean, again, like this. Almost before it was even super popular. Yeah, before, or I guess before it was, yeah, more widely, um, you know, followed and tracked and whatnot. Um, I mean, and, and really, like this, this is a very strange choice for you know somebody with access and with a lot of money, you know, um, with Paddock to to go with. Like, why would you choose a steel annual calendar chrono on a bracelet? It's because like not it's something. Fantastic. No, this is one of my favorite Flyback, paddocks. By the way, this is one of my Bam. favorite paddocks of all time, actually. But I just, I still think it's a very interesting choice, kind of an esoteric, out of left field choice for you know a a, a celebrity, I guess. Um, so, yeah, this is the, uh, oh, way to go. Now you've done it. it. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm trying to just get a little bit of the glare going. That might be better. See how that works. Um, but, yeah, this, I prefer the white dial. No, I would wear this no, with no, the no, white no, dial, no, no, like, the black, all day long. Black, 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 black. But it's you're so not going to go wrong. A lot of people are like, oh, I don't know. The bracelet is so shiny. It's like, no, it's fine. Trust it's, me. It's fine. Yeah, it's great. It's super comfortable. It's lightweight. You could wear this every day. You could wear it with a suit, wear it with shorts and a T-shirt. You'd be a boss. This is, like I said, one of my favorite paddocks of all Such time. Such a I good watch. It. It's so good. And this was a watch, the white dial specifically, was a watch that I never liked when really? I saw it like on social media or in, you know, in photos and things like that. And then when I was working here and we got one and I actually like kind of put it on my wrist, I was like, man. Yeah. I wish this, I this is cool. I wish I made a move when they were cheap. Because, when they were like uh, thirty grand. They're they're not that price anymore. <laughs> they're not thirty. Grand. Um, why don't we go with this guy now? Because this this has been a fun one for the past. When mm. this came in, I wore this for a day or two. So this is the the older. This is the sixteen seven five eight Rolex GMT uh, root beer, also known as the Clint Eastwood. Um, and he wore one of these forever. for a long yeah, actually, time. I like try and look this it up real quick. This really has that association with it. And I, it's so funny too, because you think of Clint Eastwood and you think of like the Westerns and you think of a lot of like brown. I yeah. think of a lot of yeah, brown, right. right? You think about the costumes on those kind of things and all that. And it was, it seems to fit. Like this is almost as much like fitting him as him fitting the watch kind of thing. Um, but I, to me, this is better than this. Oh, agreed. We also, right now, we have the- Talk amongst yourselves. We have the full <laughs> the full yellow gold version of, 
of the Clint Eastwood in your left, you know, that, that is yes, in the left hand. Yes, this watch in full oh gold. Oh, my God. It is, <gasps> it is one is of the... Is that Oyster or Jubilee? No, that's on, is it's that on a Jubilee. Full gold Jubilee. It's amazing. Ah, it's amazing. Yeah. I want this it so This is fantastic. Bad. This watch, I think, has brought back two-tone. Yeah. I think everybody was writing off two-tone for a long time, and they were like, oh, you know, whatever, you know, car salesman watch or whatever. But I think that when this came out and they did the rose with the steel, people were like, whoa, that's actually really good looking. Um, and now I think more people are looking at these and saying, hey, that old school yellow with the brown and the two-tone Jubilee. And, of course, Rolex just brings back a yellow gold two-tone Jubilee that is also marvelous we yeah. don't have a nickname for that yet no that, actually that's a good point the, there's uh, no nickname the, what is that the brown and gray one right the or black and gray black with and the, gray yeah, but yeah, it's like yeah, it's yeah, more yeah. about the yellow and the the yellow gold steel in yeah. my opinion yeah you can't call it the bumblebee because that's an ap oh, see look right. we even it's have ap's one. named Jeez. after transformers so like absolutely <laughs> everything gets a different name i just realized we don't have the best rolex celebrity nickname watch on the table which one <laughs> oh damn we didn't grab the nick cage that's right so if you don't know look just the best one. it is feel, a good looking watch. feel free this to look up feel watch. free to look up rolex daytona nicholas cage and you will not be disappointed it is amazing amazing best one it that's it's the leopard right the leopard yeah so but that's funny because that's a watch that's worn by a lot of people right he's not the so only one steven tyler steven has tyler one. has one i'm trying to think is there anybody else but he has that picture where he's like that that it's just like oh yeah that he's got like a headshot of him yeah, with it like this yeah yeah, yeah it's so i wonder great. if he still owns so it though because he uh, i think the u.s government probably owns that I now Robert. Say, he got into some trouble didn't he <laughs> along with a lot of his property and probably a whole lot of other <laughs> things that he used that uh big uh rm to that the compass one with neo the, oh, oh the, yeah uh, the million dollar adventure that? watch yeah, um 72 rm se- no no not 72 it's the survivor it is there's something like that not Schwarzenegger, Stallone. One. It was Stallone, yeah, that's what he was yeah. saying. And it's yeah, got yeah. like, it's got like, isn't there like a hiding compartment for water purification tablets or something Which like I that? Have that's no bananas. Idea. My God. Um, go back to the comments real quick. On YouTube, somebody was saying something that I didn't read. Somebody uh, was saying things I didn't agree with, but. Uh, oh, we've got a lot of them. Hold on. Go back up. Go up. Go up more. No, the other way. Yeah. I guess down. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. No. Keep going. I didn't read these. I want to read them. Oh, Hulk, okay, I read that. Hulk is the winner. I agree. People in the watch community aren't buying these. Flippers and speculators are. Uh, I would have agreed with you a year ago. I don't agree with exist you so anymore. much now yeah. because a lot of those guys are gone. Um, well, again, we talked about this last week where the market has changed so dramatically you are not able to walk into any, you know, na- name your brand. You're not able to walk into a boutique or an AD plunk down the you know whatever the msrp is and then walk out and immediately sell it for a 50 percent profit or more it just that doesn't exist anymore yeah you know and it's yeah honestly i think for the best you know things were getting completely out of control with prices and you know with um with secondary market values yeah and again like the the Price is coming back down to a more a more manageable level it means we are in a place where people are buying watches because they like them again, yes. which is like you know well, oh my god and, amazing. And there you know there are a ton of uh, customers who have come back to us who have said they've been out for a couple of years mm-hmm. because the prices were too crazy, right? And now they're back in, right? You know there we have the enthusiasts and the collectors returning, and it's not the flippers so much anymore. So I kind of disagree with you there. Um, go back down, David. I, I think that, that that's one. the bottom. No, there was another one I wanted to re- reply to go down. Oh, Adam Levine. We had an Adam Levine Rolex. We did actually have a watch we had that one had that his was name on it. Yeah. His name on the card. Um, it was a John Mayer Daytona, funnily enough. We've also had a paddock <laughs> with John Mayer's name on the papers. Right, and a paddock that, like, he's never been seen wearing. Yeah. It's not It's not really, you know, it's it's not something associated with it. It was like a 5205 or something, yeah, which is a great paddock, basic. but it's like John Mayer's name is on the papers, and we were like, cool, but who cares? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. It was a weird one. We didn't even advertise um, we didn't even, we didn't even advertise I like the it, idea yeah. of Guinness as a name for the black oh, and gray. Oh, I like That's that, actually. Cool, yeah. Like yeah, Guinness. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think there should be more watches named after. He needs a brown dial at that beverages. point or something. Like, that would be perfect. <laughs> Maybe that's what he means. Maybe he means as the... Oh. As the, the Clint Eastwood. Maybe. I'm not sure. No, if like I'm if I'm misunderstanding you, please let me know. What else? What else have we got that we haven't really gotten to? Um, you mentioned the actual 
Oh, the new one. Yeah, no. We That's didn't. a good point too. His his relationship is so well, deep I mean, with the brand now. I was gonna say after years and years and years of an unofficial, yeah. basically being an unofficial spokesperson for for these brands, he now has an official connection to yeah. AP, releasing you know the new QP with that right. beautiful textured Does dial. Is his name on it? I don't know honestly. On That's the, a good. I don't actually back. know if there's anything on the case back or anything that double brands it with him because that would be another level of interest. Uh, yeah, Mr. Yeah, Paradigm yeah. again on the Adam Levine thing. So the one we had was a standard yellow gold green dial Daytona yep. I think he has like an artisans de Genève he does which he is has actually, that ne that neon Daytona yeah I can't remember um, no I'm, I'm but so artisans I'm de telling Genie, you he no, has I'm, he has I'm the saying neon I can't Daytona what it looks like. all right, all right, I'm right, right. I can't remember what it looks like I'm not saying you're wrong this time <laughs> um, but you've been wrong plenty so uh -huh. it's fine uh, artisans de Genève is a company where you send them your watch. You say, hey, I own this Daytona. Please rip the dial off and, and make it a, uh, you know, make it a skeleton and make the bezel sapphire well, and put red hands on it and do all this. But that, and that, they'll do it for That's you. a model that changed dramatically for a very, for a very important reason. So, <laughs> yes, it did. Yes, now... Artisans de Genève's lawyers would be, you know, uh, very insistent that that is how we describe their business. That's not how it used to be. It used to be that you could go onto their website and you could buy pieces right. directly from them that were customized Rolex Very watches. limited runs. Sure. And they would do like, they would do like a Paul Newman style thing. They would do a Big Crown Sub style yeah. thing. And they would make, All kinds you know, of stuff. 28 of this and so many of this and that for that. And, and, uh... It, it's a cool thing. I can see why guys do it. Um, gray suit needs to up his mic volume. Just hmm. keep talking. Don't worry about it. You're good. Hmm. You're beautiful. Should I move this one up um, a little bit? So anyways, to continue the Artisans de Genève story before Robert got dis uh, distracted by something shiny. Yes. So you can do all this customization, but Rolex actually secretly purchased a watch off of their website uh, a couple years ago. And they then had their lawyers inform Artisans de Genève that this may be copyright infringement. Yeah, they got a C and D. And then they proceeded to sue Artisans well, de Genève in a Swiss court. There was another company in Europe, or in California, that was doing it with the, like the California dial. Like the pastel color. Pastel color dial. Yes, with ro and, yes. And preceding and the US, OPs with the crazy. US, a U.S. court basically said that's copyright infringement because you put the name back on the dial. Sure, sure. Um, but so... But if you own the watch and then send it to them or yes. commission it. We were getting there, Craig. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, the model now is that you need to provide the actual watch to artisans. To right. And they do it as a service for individual customer. And they do it as a pure customer. customization as opposed to them marketing a piece as a customized Rolex. Right. Um, which makes total sense. And there's sense. still some gray area there because they kicked it to the lower courts in terms of the trademark. They did. Um, they've kicked it back saying, you know, whether or not they can advertise it and right. have like the Rolex branding as part of their thing. And right. it's like, right. it's It's very muddy waters. It's really interesting because obviously it's your property. You can do what you want with it. But if you're a company and you're advertising it and there's there are laws, right? There are federal and international laws that dictate that like counterfeit goods are not legal, right? It is sure. actually illegal to have and make a fake Rolex. Right. So Mr. Paradigm actually uh, clarified and said he's posting the hate he got for his fake Paul Newman. I remember hearing about that, but I actually didn't look into that and see what was going on there. I think he's got like a redial or something like that, yeah. right? Or it's not a correct dial. The vintage world is really difficult, and and it's hard to make sure that stuff is correct. Um, it's it's a really tricky world to live in, and it's really tough. And there's a lot of questions about like what's important to you and what is actually original and and things of that sort. And with the Newman Daytonas, it is tough because there's those Texas dials and things like that out there. So um, I can't comment because I don't really know about that particular watch, but. I remember he was he was definitely under fire for that when that came out. Um, the gentleman's driver asks our thoughts on the Travis Scott by AP uh, collaboration, so the uh, the Cactus Jack one. I actually think that that watch is very. I like the way it looks. It's a really cool looking piece. I could care less. Cactus that it's, Jack. Yeah. Ca ca That's the best color AP. Dynamic. 
the brown oh, ceramic. Oh, that one. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Super, super cool looking piece. Why do they call it Cactus Jack? What's that have to do it's, with it? It's oh, yeah. Travis Scott's brand. I, I don't care is that it has any affiliation with Travis is? Scott. Am I dating I myself? honestly Who could. Is that? He's a, he's a rapper, but I literally okay. could not. You could play Travis Scott, and I would have no idea if you were playing it or not. Like I'm too old at this point. But I think I but, am too. But look at that! Like that that's actually a gorgeous piece. A A P. Do you want to? Should we try the uh, uh, the computer thing? Do you want to pull try. this up? Because this yeah. is kind of wild. You've got yeah. you've got a typical A P Perpetual in terms of their their Royal Oak Quantian Perpetual. You've got the the weeks around the outside in like a handwritten font. Everything's handwritten. Sapphire. Oh, instead, instead of describing it, give me two seconds to pull it up on okay. the screen. Okay, he's going to pull it up. Jeez. This is a really interesting watch because this has a lot of character to it. Does, it. it does. It does. And it's the, color's the best coloring. The brown? The brown with that, with that so canvas? Good. It looks so good. The first time All right, David, go ahead. You can pull it up. Brown yeah, right. So they've done black, white, and blue. Um, yeah, there it is. That's like the all the fonts are are handwritten. You've got this weird. It looks like a Tim Burton moon phase. It does, there. yeah. With like, the, um, I mean, again, like I I love the way this watch looks. I do not care at all that it is a Travis Scott collaboration. Like that would not influence me at all to go to go and buy this. But I do think the watch itself is really really cool looking. And that's like, oh cool. I mean, it's all luminous. That. Yeah. So, so for me, that doesn't appeal, but I mean, that's not going to be a surprise to anybody who knows me or has watched this stream more than once. Like, this is clearly not my uh, It's interesting my too, particular you know, brand of vodka. Out, but out, of, out of all the brands, I think AP is probably doing the most when it comes to pop culture collaborations at this point. That's cool. They did the rotor with the logo and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, actually, yeah. you see a lot of the movement that way, which I like. That skeletonized rotor. I like the strap. I like the color. It's cool. Yeah. Oh, oops, sorry. All right, you can go oh, back, David. That's all right. It's, you yeah. can go back. Um, we saw it. But, um, you know, I don't know, I, I, I don't think there's really any other brand that is leaning as heavily, as, as, you know, as far into that kind of thing as, as AP is. I mean, you well, think no, about but like you the, have Hugh Blow and you have Richard Mill, which I think are two brands who have completely no. built the entirety of their brand based on who is wearing their watches. So, Richard Nobody Mill, Nobody yes. would know who Richard Mill is without Rafael Nadal. They were they were opinion. they were kind of the first to do that honestly to to really lean into a celebrity athlete spokesperson. I mean Rolex obviously did it a hundred plus years ago. Really, they you know with Mercedes Glides and a and a, and a bunch of other oh, uh, you yeah, know yeah, yeah. big like, big 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 name yeah. you know yeah. people at the time. But in the modern era, Richard Mille is really one of the first to kind of that's really how they built their brand was 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 you know hitching their wagon to these like incredibly right. famous athletes at the top of their game. Well, it's really and tough because you move, you move into this world. Again, I've, I've said this a bunch of times and I apologize for repeating myself, but you come into this like 200 year old industry and you try to do something different and yeah. you try to do something unique. And if you're coming in as a new brand, like it's a really hard road to hoe because you, you know, you're up against Patek Philippe, you're up against Vacheron, sure. you're up against AP and these companies with all this you're like legacy. Countries with, I mean, and companies with hundreds countries. of countries, yeah. Companies with hundreds of years of, of history and exactly. name recognition. And so how do you like get into that? And yeah. I think Richard Mill has done an amazing job of doing that Agreed. through that pop culture lens. To a point, Hugh Blow has done that because Hugh Blow came out of nowhere, right? They well, like- That was and, just JCB Bay. Like, I mean, who like what? So what? Right, what, but what, what, solely, but what models are you thinking about? It was solely advertising, though, and a lot of that happened kind of before I started paying attention. So I can't say like, oh, they did it with this, but but it's a brand that didn't get where they are with what's inside the watch. That's fair. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. I do think that. Not that Richard, what's inside Richard, the watch is bad. Richard Mille I'm and, not and, and, on and, and Hublot people. are two totally different things. They are things. completely different. I will say that Richard, Richard Mille has a lot more under the hood. Thank you. That's where I was going. Yes. yes. He did the uh, Jay-Z collaboration like 20 years ago, too. Really? They did, did like an official Jay-Z watch like 20 years ago. I don't know about so that. So M M MJ, MJ Karampas asks, thought, um, I don't know, uh, thought, thoughts on the nipple dial root beer, the 16753 or you know, 1675, uh, do you see it doing a Steve McQueen or Paul Newman or is it just too common? And I really think it's just too common. You know, the, the Newman is such a, just by nature of those, those exotic dials, there's so few of them. Yeah, the key with the Newman is that nobody liked it. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, people liked this when this came out. And the McQueen, so this you know, again, so the, the Explorer, the 1655, you know, it. I don't ever see it. It's not special enough. Just like aesthetically what mm -hmm. it is, it's not, in, you know, visually interesting enough, I think, to really take yeah. off. I think that you know, was also small production because I mean, there's only so many spelunkers that were by a lot. So <laughs> I know, it's I know. true though. It was way I too know, niche. I know. All Ridiculous. Right. Four minutes. Okay. What are we doing? Omega did it with Schumacher. Yes. That's a good one. What? The Mal Met Nair. Um, the, true, the Schumacher Speedmasters, yeah. right? Those, and like the Ferrari branded stuff. So the funny, everything. the funny thing about that is, is that Schumacher, the greatest F1 driver of all time, you know, uh, you can make your arguments with Lewis Hamilton, but you know, the biggest name in F1 yeah. ever, But I mean, like, ever, I don't ever, follow ever. F1 on, and I know who Schumacher is. Correct. Just exactly. to talk about so the level that so he's at. Ridiculous, you know, personality and person in, in the world, not even just his, his, you know, specific sport. Omega, Omega gives them like one of their crappiest watches. <laughs> they did, they, they did the reduced, reduced. their speedy, the speed master <laughs> reduced and like no shots at anybody who loves it or has it. I actually, Maybe I had one. That. I owned one back in the day. I, you know, I love that watch. What color? I had a yellow one. Nice. Yeah. The yellow one yeah. Sick. Um, but like, it's just very funny to me, like looking back on it and being like, wait a minute, this is the, the most successful driver in history and you, and and it's you gave like him the, the speedy worst reduced? worst speed yeah. master. It's an automatic it's so small funny. speed master. So yeah. So funny. Um, I was thinking of a quick rapid fire okay, what do you got? before we leave because we just like, there's a couple of things that we had put on the table that I thought were really good. And yeah. we did grab like a Seamaster with the blue wave dial. Um, Clinton wears a Panerai. Ooh, yes, Damien. he does. He, wears, like he has a radio mirror. He actually has a great watch collection. Ooh, split screen. Robert, you gotta work on Living your, uh, you, you, gotta, you gotta work on your, uh, I did not I have, know. there you go, okay, yeah. with your Panerai on. It's funny, Daryl <laughs> Hammond said he did that like yeah. one time and then Daryl Hammond picked yeah. up on it and it became a thing. <laughs> so we have the blue Seamaster with a wave dial. This is the modern version with the ceramic bezel. Um, it's all right, it'll it'll there you go, there it is. Um, this is a great watch. This is, at this price point, you can't beat this. I really love the green. This the is green like, you can strap. be a yep. spy for a couple thousand dollars, and it's fun. You should do it. Here, I go, love this go, watch. Go, go with this guy next. So, um, ooh, Tudor, Tiger, Tudor, Tiger Woods, y'all. Tudor Tiger. <laughs> Does so this, this is, watch benefit from the Tiger Woods connection? Absolutely not. Mm. Absolutely not. I, I, I mean, honestly, like, I grew up a golf fan, and I remember the first time I saw this having no idea that there was actually a real, I didn't a know. real I Tiger Woods you connection. you told me. I, did. I didn't know that the Tudor Tiger yeah. was called the Tiger because of Tiger Woods. I yep. thought it was just they were like, Tudor Tiger sounds good to me. Well, I mean, it's, it's another one of those like Schumacher things where it's funny. It was early on in Tiger's career where he didn't, he had, didn't, obviously he exploded onto the scene and he had a lot of success right away, yeah. success right away, but he wasn't necessarily the, the personality and, and the, didn't have the status and the stature that he has, you know, or had a few years later. So he worked with Tudor and made that, you know, made, yeah. made the Tudor Tiger, which is ridiculous. This one I pulled and, and actually, I find it really funny. funny. Sorry, funny oh. story. He actually, he wanted, his, his team wanted, ro wanted to work with Rolex and he, he wanted to have Tiger on the dial of a Daytona. <laughs> Never. And Rolex said, absolutely not. So the Never. next best thing was I mean, was they Tudor. didn't do it for they, Roger Federer, they arguably literally, one of the greatest players of tennis, well, you know, Tiger. ever. Well, yeah. And but like, anyway, so they kicked it to Tudor, their sister. Yeah. Anyway, it's hilarious. So I pulled this because I, you can't help but, like, you see a red strap and you think of one gentleman. And <laughs> I think that that's quite amazing. I wish I had that kind of clout to be able to say, like, yo, this, you know, a green strap means me Robert, or something. You, you, that's you, an amazing you need, thing. You need to... Only wear your Panerai, Only wear Panerai on like a neon, green, a neon green strap <laughs> every day for the rest of your life. So but you it's like, to guy. talk about people with outsized influence, Kevin O'Leary, he's yeah. huge in the watch world. And yep. like, you know, even like, I, I was talking about it with my mom the other day and really? she was talking about Shark Tank and I was like, oh yeah, Kevin O'Leary's a watch guy. And she yeah. was like, oh really? And it was like, you know, it's he's become this huge thing within the watch world for these red straps. So the, the and funny, it's really the funny cool, thing about this, this is though, not a Kevin O'Leary watch. But again, the funny thing about this is that he he didn't choose to do the red straps because he wanted to get noticed. It was literally for continuity. It was his thing. No, 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 no. It was continuity. So he he had worn a watch on a red strap at a certain point on a shoot, and wardrobe literally told him. Okay, we're gonna cut this episode up. You no have you have kidding. to wear another watch on a red strap. So now he just wears watches on red straps for continuity purposes because they'll film they'll film an episode and then two years later they'll you know they'll, whatever. Continue. So a brand that has uh, been coming back into the spotlight a lot recently is Cartier, and I pulled this because it of never, Timothy it Chalamet. Left. It never left the spotlight. Yeah, they left. It never left. Um, the dark times, dude. Do we I need know, to talk about no, the Khalid no, and no, all of that? We don't, we don't. So 
uh, Timothy Chalamet and others have started this trend of like, hey, small panerais are really, or panerais, I was looking at Damien's comment. And Tim I said Timothy panerais. Chalamet and Justin McDowell have started the trend of wearing <laughs> small Cartiers. Small Cartiers are cool. And I totally <laughs> agree. I would wear this. This is an old school Santos Dumont. This is like, I love this watch. I, I wish I could own this watch because I would wear this all the time. Yeah, it's um, it is small. It is a statement in a different way, right? The opposite of wearing my Panerai with a suit, which I do because I enjoy the ridiculousness <laughs> of it. Um, this goes the other way. And I would wear this with short sleeves and be like, yes, this is a tiny little watch that I'm wearing short sleeves. Um, and I think that that is a very cool thing that he has done. Um, in well, wearing like his, he wears his, like panthers or dude, something. His, style, his stylist has done, please. Well, that's not him. Whatever. Whatever. Tim Does it matter? Timothee. Does it matter? Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Whatever. All right. doesn't matter. I'm gonna uh, cut off here. I feel like the Phantom of the Opera. Like <laughs> half my face. All right. We should All go. Right. We should go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for watching. I don't know what the hell we just talked about for the past hour plus. It went by fast though. Thank fun. you all for participating. Yeah, appreciate the it. The best part of this for me is when you for guys are in the comments, when yeah. you're talking, when you're participating, you don't listen to anybody else. Don't don't, <laughs> don't, don't lie to us and yourself. No. no we we really, really love it when yeah. you guys are commenting and engaging in the conversation. That is why we do this. And so I thank you all for that. Yep. Thank you for watching with us and bearing with us as we talk about the ridiculousness that is the watch world and the watch market. <laughs> Have a good weekend, Thanks, everybody. guys. See you next week.